हेलो एवरीवन आई एम दुर्गा सरकार योर वर्बल मेंटर फ्रॉम आई एम एस इंटरनेशनल वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ जी मैट फ्राइडे इफ यू हैवेंट सीन आर लास्ट वीडियो येट यू कैन फाइंड इट बाय क्लिकिंग द आई बटन इन द टॉप राइट कॉर्नर नाउ लेट्स डाइव स्ट्रेट इन टू क्वेश्चन अ चैलेंजिंग क्रिटिकल रीजनिंग प्रॉब्लम डेटेड एट सिक्स प्लस बिफोर वी प्रोसीड आई एनकरेज यू टू पॉज द वीडियो हियर एंड टेक अ शॉर्ट एट सॉल्विंग इट Okay, guys. So let's have a look at the question stem. So what is the question stem saying? Which of the following, if true, would most strengthen the columnist's argument? That means this is a strengthening question. So let's move to the argument. What is the columnist saying? Metro city has a lower percentage of residents with humanities degrees than any other city of comparable size in our nation. So if there is a nation, then metro city is one city. in that nation and metro city has a lower percentage of residents with humanities degrees than other cities of maybe the same size so in metro city the residents with humanities degrees their percentage is low moving ahead nation wide university graduates generally earn more than people who are not university graduates so if you are a university graduate Will definitely earn more than somebody who is not a university graduate. So, not a university graduate and university graduate, a university graduate will earn more. But those with humanities degrees typically earn less than those with non-humanities degrees. So, in a university graduate, again we have two categories: non-humanities degrees and humanities degrees. So, person. with maybe a science or a commerce degree will earn more than somebody with a humanities degree so this is what the data that is presented to us in the argument by the author by the columnist and on the basis of that he concludes that so the main reason metro city has higher income per capita than any other city of comparable size so one person of metro city or the average income of a person of metro city is higher than a average income of any other person of a comparable city size because of this low percentage of residents that have humanities degree so this is what this is a kind of a cause and effect this is a kind of a cause and effect argument wherein the author is saying that there is one factor which is leading to another so there is x which is leading to y or the low percentage of people with humanities degrees is leading to the high per capita income in metro city okay so let's have a look at the five options that we have out of which there will be one correct answer and there will be four incorrect choices so moving towards option number a what does a tell us metro city residents with humanities degrees have higher income per capita than do people with humanities degrees in any other city of comparable size in the nation so what does this option translate to that in metro city the people with humanities degrees they have higher income than people with humanities degrees in the other cities of the nation that means if the per capita income of metro city is high then it can also be because of this higher income of people with humanities degrees and what do we want in our argument what is the columnist trying to say that the higher per capita income of metro city is because of the low percentage of humanities degree residents so in a option we are actually getting another cause for our result whereas in strengthening what do we have to do we have to eliminate any other cause which can lead to our effect so actually option a is not strengthening but it is weakening our answer choice so we can eliminate option a moving towards option b what does option b tell us the percentage of residents with university degrees is lower in metro city than in any other city of comparable size in the nation 
so what is b telling us that university degree percentage of people with university degree is lower in metro city than in other city of comparable size so percentage of people with university degree is lower than the percentage of people with university degrees in other cities so that does that just tells us that people with non university degrees will be higher in metro city now people with non university degrees actually earn less people with non university degrees earn less so if people with non university degrees are more then the per capita income should not be higher in metro city so actually this is leading to a opposite conclusion of what our argument is trying to say so this is not strengthening our conclusion and thus we can be eliminated moving towards the next one what does c say c says nationwide university graduates without humanities degrees typically earn more than do individuals without university degrees so we know that university graduates without uh, humanities degrees that means the people with non humanity degrees and the non university graduates so we know non humanities degrees will definitely earn more than non universities graduates which is something that is already mentioned in our argument so c is just repeating a fact which is already given in our argument it is not adding any new information so we can safely eliminate c so now we have eliminated the first three options and the other two options which are left to analyze are d and e okay so let's have a look at option d now so what is option d saying metro city residents with degrees outside the humanities have per capita income no higher than the per capita income of such residents of other cities of comparable size in the nation so what does this translate to that metro city residents with degrees outside humanities means non humanities degrees of metro city they do not have a income which is higher than means it is either equal or less than the income of non humanity degree holders of other cities till what is our conclusion that the average per capita income of metro city is higher now the average or per capita income of metro city can be higher how how will we calculate the average or the per capita income of metro city will be the income of non humanity degrees into number of non humanity degrees plus income of humanity degrees upon number of humanity degrees upon the total population now let's have a look at this equation you might remember weighted average while looking at this equation so how can we have a higher average we can have a higher average if we increase either of these two quantities but we know that people with humanities degrees already have a lower income than people with non humanities degrees so increasing their number might not increase our average that much to maximize our average what will we do we will increase the number of people with non humanities degrees so increasing the number of people with non humanities degrees will give us a higher per capita income so number of people with non humanities degrees has to be more than the number of people with humanities degrees in other words the percentage of humanity degrees people will be less that is what our author was trying to say low percentage of humanity degrees leading to a high per capita income of metro city so yes we can hold on to option number d so holding on to option number d let's have a look at option e now what is option e saying in metro city a lower proportion of university graduates have humanities degrees than in any city of comparable size in the nation so what is option e trying to say that a lower proportion means a lower pro number of university graduates have humanities degrees that means the people with humanities degrees is quite low or the percentage of people with university uh, with humanities degrees is quite less as compared to cities of comparable size that is what our author 
was saying in the first statement that metro city has a lower percentage of residents with humanities degrees than any other city. So this is already given in our argument he is nothing but it is a restatement of information that is already given. So we can eliminate E and we can safely mark D as the correct choice. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to keep practicing and refining your skills. Stay tuned for more insights and strategies to ace the GMAT. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more notifications on our next videos. Until next time, keep striving for excellence.